ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Fifield, Community Manager, Stack Foundation. Okay, he's up and going. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did I cut out? Manager with the OpenStack Foundation. I'll be joined uh, later with, by Mark Collier, who's our COO, and this is OpenStack 101. Uh, we wanted to get those of you who may not have experienced OpenStack uh, before together to run through a few of the basics so you can have a bit of a better time engaging with the various presentations that go on this week. Uh, before we get started, a special thanks to our mate Lauren from the States, who produced a few of these slides. Uh, this is a great example of our community working together to bring you fantastic content. Yeah, but uh, before we get together. started, a bit of a motivating example, uh, one that I, I uh, really like myself. Uh, so there's this little organization in Europe that has a very simple mandate, uh, which is to understand how the universe works and, and what it's made of. And of course, it's CERN. You might have seen recently in the newspapers the Nobel Prize for Physics. Uh, was awarded to some physicists involved in this discovery of the Higgs boson. This is an event display of a Higgs to four electron decay, if I remember correctly. And this organization supports 11,000 physicists uh, and provides computing resources for the Large Hadron Collider, which is producing about 35 petabytes of data every year. So after effectively working to discover the Higgs boson, right now the LHC is in shutdown and they're upgrading it uh, to make it achieve more powerful energy so they can discover more new physics. And the IT guys at CERN are taking the uh, opportunity to upgrade the IT infrastructure at CERN at the same time. And the good news for us is they're building their infrastructure based on OpenStack. Right now, they're running 60,000 cores, and they're moving through to 300,000 cores by the end of 2015. It's a pretty amazing project, and this is the reason that we build OpenStack. But what is it? You saw this diagram in uh, Jonathan's keynote this morning, but I thought it was worth uh, running through it in a bit more detail. So if we think about OpenStack at the core level, effectively, it's software that you can use to build clouds. With the compute components, essentially what you do is you buy some servers, be they from one of uh, the OpenStack Foundation sponsors or be they bits and pieces that you've put together in your garage, what you do next is you install a hypervisor on them. That hypervisor can be anything. It can be KVM, VMware, Xen, can run containers like Docker and LXC. It can even uh, use bare metal directly if you have a workload that doesn't need a hypervisor. You put OpenStack on top of that hypervisor, and you have a full infrastructure service cloud. It's really simple. In OpenStack, there's a couple of different types of storage. OpenStack block storage is effectively like when you go to your local computer store and you buy a USB hard disk, three terabytes, four terabytes. You bring it home, you plug it into your desktop, you unplug it, you plug it into your laptop. Really nice, portable way to do uh, persistent storage. OpenStack block storage is like that, but with virtual machines. So you choose the size for your virtual volume. You choose which virtual machine it's attached to. You unplug it and switch between it. And just like the compute component, OpenStack block storage is pluggable. So if you have existing storage from Hitachi, EMC, NetApp, all of these kind of guys uh, you can see listed on our website, you can point OpenStack at that storage, and you've got block-based storage uh, controlled using a cloud environment. We've also got object storage. You saw uh, this morning the fantastic global cluster demo, uh, basically built on the idea that storage hardware fails all the time, and you should buy slightly cheaper hardware and keep multiple copies of everything. But Replica and managing replicas is quite difficult, uh, but OpenStack object storage actually makes it really easy to operate because it just takes care of all of that. We've also got really exciting network components. Right now, around the world, there are people in data centers plugging and unplugging network cables or logging into switches manually and configuring VLANs. With OpenStack networking, you can create very complex software-defined network topologies which are application-aware from the comfort of your dashboard or command line, or API interface. Of course, there are also some shared services that tie things together. You've got the uh, authentication access system that you can point at your existing LDAP or Active Directory. You've got the virtual machine image catalog, which uh, you can uh, use to deliver images to your compute nodes and keep a catalog of all of them. Uh, and of course, all of this is available uh, through the dashboard in the API or in a command line interface. 
But those of you who are joining OpenStack, uh, starting your journey uh, right now, are very, very lucky. Because in the Havana release, we've also got two new components which aren't featured on this slide. OpenStack orchestration allows you to create templates for your applications to make sure you can deploy the same application in the same way and make it scalable. We'll look at that in the demo later on. And then there's OpenStack metering, which enables you to get really good information out of your cloud and pipe it into your billing system or your monitoring system. And of course, all of this is written in Python under the Apache 2 license with a very distributed architecture, meaning it's very, very scalable. But of course, what does that actually mean? It's all nice and well when you've got a bunch of blocks up there. But here's the things you can actually do with OpenStack. If you want to start five servers with that specification, that's a click on the dashboard and API call. If you want to suspend a particular server, that's an API call, click on the dashboard. If you want to take a snapshot of a particular server, say you want to clone it, you can store your snapshot in the OpenStack object storage at the click of a button. With networking, if you've got a pool of public IP addresses that you're sharing between virtual machines and you want to assign a particular public IP address to a particular virtual machine, that's simple, straightforward. If you've got a bunch of web servers that you want to control the firewall for generally, you can do that. If you want to create a private network to share uh, data between your application without it going through the internet, you can do that from the comfort of your dashboard. With block storage, you choose a 100 gig volume and attach it to a particular server. Easy. Or you can take a snapshot of that volume and back it up to the object storage. With object storage, we saw the uh, example before uh, earlier today about the cat photo. And of course, it's really easy to store the photos of your cats in OpenStack object storage. It's just a single command or an API call or uh, a click on the dashboard to upload that into OpenStack. And of course, it's then easy to turn around and make that cat photo available to the world. We have made uh, quite a few advances with the dashboard recently. Um, this one's in Russian for some reason. Funny that. But uh, we'll do a bit of a demo later to show you a bit of the new features there. But of course, if you're a software engineer, if you're interested in building cloud applications, what you're interested in is the API. Here's an example of booting a server, what it looks like on the command line, and what it converts to in the post request. Here's the same thing in Python. Now, there are bindings available for Python, which are very good because OpenStack is written in Python. But there are also projects you can use if you're coding in Java, Node.js, Ruby, .NET, pure JavaScript, Perl, PHP, and Go. So if you're coding applications in any language, you can make them use Cloud APIs. And now I'd like to invite our illustrious COO, Mark Collier, up to the stage to talk a bit about why OpenStack is more than just software. All right. Thanks, everybody. It's great to be back at another OpenStack Summit. So as Tom said, um, thanks for uh, that overview of the software. You know, OpenStack is more than just software. It's more than just code. It's absolutely about the community. You probably hear, heard us talking about that on and on. But uh, I thought for some of you who are new to the community, it would be good to see a few of the stats. Now, we have over 12,000 members in the foundation. You probably can tell it's a pretty big, growing community from your time here already this morning. And just in the Havana release uh, a few weeks ago, from six months of development, we had over 20,000 patches merged. So that's a tremendously uh, active open source project, one of the most active open source projects. And it, we really think of our community as having many different um, stakeholders, many different folks involved. We have, uh, obviously, our developers. We have users who are very important, perhaps the most important, and we have uh, our ecosystem. And just in terms of the number of contributors, we've already seen uh, over 1,600 that have, uh, have contributed, about 400 a month. Um, I mentioned the ecosystem here, just a few of the companies. So if you're thinking of uh, building an OpenStack cloud, there are many different companies, a lot of names you recognize here that you can go to. Um, all that engagement, all that development, really uh, is what fuels the innovation. So in a little over three years, the project's gone from 10,000 lines of code to 1.7 million. And that's just one indication of, of how quickly we see OpenStack evolving. And the reason is because of the growth of the community and the process that we're all uh, using here today to plan the next version, Icehouse. And I mentioned users, really important. So a lot of big names here, like PayPal, who's going to be speaking in here. 
in just a few minutes. Um, Cisco, WebEx, a lot of names here. Yahoo will be speaking later today as well, I believe. And you can also learn more about our users on the website. We have over 90 different users that we've profiled uh, from all over the world. And when we think about you know, why people are using OpenStack, there are a few themes that come, come forward. One is moving faster. So if you heard this morning, you'll hear throughout this week, when you talk to users, they are all trying to empower their developers to build new products, new features, and get out of their way, give them an API, and let them move more quickly. The flexibility, I think Tom mentioned earlier, that there's a, a lot of capability within OpenStack to plug in different backends, whether it's storage, networking, or compute, different virtualization technologies, and of course, the community. And now we just uh, have a few minutes left, so we wanted to actually show you OpenStack in action. Indeed. And uh, this is not a Mark Shuttleworth, you know, nice rounded edges demo. This is something rough and ready. <laughs> uh, so we've even had the screensaver go on, and Mark had to enter his password. Uh, so one of the first things uh, you should look at when you're uh, looking at your OpenStack Havana dashboard is choosing your language. So I'm going to change this one from uh, Fanti Jungwon back to Australian English. Uh, so I can understand it. Um, but rather than running through everything uh, to do with OpenStack today, I thought it would be cool to run through some of the new features uh, that we've um, uh, added to the dashboard rather than showing you how to launch instances. And one of those new features is, uh, you see, see here, this is the uh, admin panel, uh, which you'll, if you're logged in as an administrator, as I am, you'll get these two tabs at the top. Uh, let's focus on the, what the users are seeing by clicking so there's the project, a project tab. tab and then an admin tab, depending on your role. That's right, yeah. And you can see uh, we've done a bit of work on the eye candy. So we have a nice uh, few pie charts there you can see to get your resources in addition to the uh, CSV download that's been there for a while. But uh, what I want to do is use the OpenStack orchestration feature uh, to create a stack. And uh, a stack is basically a little template that you can use to create a cloud application that might span multiple servers. So rather than just starting up a single instance of a particular operating system and then manually installing your, operating, uh, installing your software, this will go in there and uh, uh, install that software for you. So it's pretty simple. It's just got one button, uh, launch stack. and. Uh, just before this demo, Mark uh, passed me a template which uh, contained information on how to set up a WordPress uh, popular blogging software across two virtual machines, one for the database server and one for the web server. And so what I'm going to do is uh, paste this in there. So Tom, what does that template actually describe? What is it telling the OpenStack cloud about what you're trying to launch? So uh, basically, this will describe uh, all of the steps that are required to set up that particular application. Uh, basically, uh, starting a particular flavor of virtual machine, uh, in, uh, logging in and installing particular software, and all of the, the steps that need to uh, be gone through to ensure that the application is set up uh, as you wish. Great. Well, I'll let you uh, keep, keep going here and maybe just say a few yeah. more words about the orchestration system. So, you know, it's all about making uh, developers' lives uh, easier and saving time, as well as sharing knowledge. And the templates are a great way to share that knowledge. There are a lot of different templates already um, on the web. There's a, a repository on GitHub that has a lot of different sample templates. And it's really, as you get more and more complex in your deployments, uh, it mm. saves a lot of time to have a proven, repeatable orchestration through the templates. That's right. And this is one of the best things, is that people are already getting out there and sharing these templates. You can find this one online on GitHub. And you can see I've just typed in a name, a few passwords, pretty simple things, as well as taking this box, rollback on failure, which is going to help uh, save me if I try and uh, start or upgrade this application. It doesn't work. I'm just going to select a small instance for this to, uh, to start with. And then we click Launch. Uh, OK. I didn't type in a password. So Just make sure you fill in all of the uh, <laughs> things with asterisks on them. We actually saw them once already. We're going to do them again. But I'm going to assume that over this lunch break, you have a couple of work things you want to straighten out. Is that what you're trying to get at? Uh-oh. Are we having live demo? Uh, <laughs> the demo gods are not smiling on us today. Indeed, really not. That's well, maybe because you, you launched the script. Uh, earlier backstage. Exactly. So that, that's probably why uh, I noticed you had 
Indeed. You're so already, we'll switch, running the I'll switch to one I prepared earlier. Uh, so basically, once you create the stack, uh, what you'll see is that on your instance list, where if you're normally creating um, instances manually, you'll see that this one's created uh, two uh, WordPress stack uh, instances. One is a web server, and one is a database server. And uh, you can also, if you're running a particularly large application, one of the cool uh, things you can do is actually get some information about that stack by clicking on the stack, and uh, it will show you a topology overview of all of the components. Of course, I've only set up a two uh, you know, instance stack, but if you're running a cluster of database servers or a cluster of web servers, it's quite convenient to find out information. You can click through to find out information about those particular resources, which you can also get in a list view, which is handy if you're running a lot. And I mentioned before that the, these templates are recipes that show the steps that you have to go through uh, to start up those particular applications. This one, you can see the events view basically has one where it goes into progress and then it's complete. So it's quite simple. But you could see that if you're setting up a very complex application, uh, this will have uh, many, many steps. And you can find exactly the state of the installation of your application as you're going through. So one of the other features uh, that I'll show you is on the admin dashboard, uh, the metering project uh, called Solometer. And uh, you can see that uh, I'm just running this on a virtual machine. It's actually hosted in Australia at Monash University as part of the Nectar project. So all of this is going live on the internet, and we're relying on the reliability of you two open stack You can take the Australian clouds. out of Australia, but he insists on keeping his cloud there. I don't exactly. Know that, you know, it's something about this NSA thing. But, uh, Anyway, this global disk usage is basically uh, a report that is generated from the Solometer API. And the Solometer API it, uh, enables you to query really uh, detailed information that is from the data store. So there's collectors running on your compute nodes, your object storage, your network nodes. All of this information is available through the API. So you can query it to make little nice to read reports like this for your admins. You can plug that into your billing system. I think, Mark, you even had a go at combining the uh, metering system with uh, the orchestration system. Yeah, that's a good point. So you know, both of these capabilities, the orchestration and the metering, are new in Havana. They've been in development for over a year, but this is the first time they've been part of the integrated release. And they work very well together. So one of the things people have been asking for for quite a while, those users we love to, to listen to, was, was auto-scaling. And so as you think about getting those insights into where, what's happening on your cloud. You're starting to see your database server getting hammered. You're getting a, a website spike. And you want to spin up more resources. You can now do that in an automated fashion. And it's a way of, of delivering auto scaling by taking the, the insights, the data from metering, and having that talk to your orchestration side and actually spin up more machines uh, to take, take care of the load. Indeed. And uh, one of the things that the team's been working on is making sure that all of these really great functionalities of OpenStack are all presented through the dashboard. So uh, one of the new features you'll see in your drop-down list uh, when you're looking at a particular instance is the ability to resize it. So we can uh, expand our database server if it is in that situation of getting hammered with lots and lots of requests from a small instance uh, into a medium one. And it's uh, that simple. It will also pop up uh, something later after it's gone away and pr preserved all, uh, uh, prepared all of the disk uh, to enable you to confirm that before the change is actually made. And uh, of course, all of the uh, old features are still there and uh, looking fantastic. We can bring up our network topology view and uh, see that in this particular tenant, we've only got a private network running. If we switch to a different tenant, uh, the demo tenant, we can see that there's a public and a private network. And uh, yeah, that's a, a very, very quick overview of the dashboard. Is there anything we've missed, Mark? Well, I think uh, you should probably see if our resize completed. Is that going to yeah. put you on the spot in the demo? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it usually takes a couple of minutes to actually resize a live instance. And, and as you said, it, it will typically ask you to confirm that at the end uh, to make sure you, you, uh, you want to do that. Was that in this, uh, this user view, or was it in the other project? Uh, so yep, this oh, is, uh, is still, still okay. resizing and migrating. It's uh, one of the cool things about having a cloud that's you know, thousands of miles away. But uh, unfortunately, this one's running in a virtual machine, so it's going to take a little bit longer than I think we've got yeah. time left for. OK, well, we've got a, we just got a minute left. So uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for 
attending the OpenStack 101. There's a lot of great sessions in this room throughout the rest of the week, or today and tomorrow. And uh, I'm Mark Collier. And I'm Tom Fifield. And we hope you have, have a, a great time, time with, with OpenStack. OpenStack.